In this video, we're going to look at spirometry and look at the differences between normal, obstructive pulmonary disease, and also restrictive lung disease. It is a good idea to recap uh, the lung volumes and lung capacities before looking into this video. So one way to monitor lung function is by using a lung function test, such as a spirometry. If we breathe in and out normally in this lung volume measuring device, we can see our tidal volume, which is typically 500 mils or 0.5 liters. The graph here, the x-axis you can say is just the time, and on the y-axis is the lung volume. So going up the y-axis is inspiration. The lung volume will increase when we inspire air in. And going down the y-axis is expiration. The lung volume will decrease when we breathe out, obviously. So now imagine taking a maximal deep breath in. This is the inspiratory reserve volume, also known as IRV. And now imagine taking a normal breath or normal breaths and then having a maximal expiration. This is your expiratory reserve volume or ERV. And the air remaining in your lungs after the maximal expiration is the residual volume, or RV. You just always have that there. Using these lung volumes, you can measure the lung capacities. The lung capacities help define functioning lungs. The vital lung capacity refers to the maximum amount of air expired from a fully inflated lung. This means it's the tidal volume, TV, plus the inspiratory reserve volume, plus the expiratory reserve volume. The functional residual capacity, which should not be mixed up with the residual volume, represents the volume of air remaining in the lungs after expiration of a normal breath. So it's residual volume plus expiratory reserve volume. Very important is also the total lung capacity, which is the sum of all the lung volumes. In a typical adult male, it's about 6 liters. We will use a typical adult male uh, total lung capacity as an example in the following scenarios. So this first graph represents the, uh, a normal lung. Air coming in and carbon dioxide coming out. The alveoli are inflating and deflating normally. Dynamic measurements of lung volumes and capacities have been used to help determine lung dysfunction. The vital capacity uh, is really important to remember. Again, it's the tidal volume plus the inspiratory reserve volume plus the expiratory reserve volume. The forced vital capacity is basically the same thing as the vital capacity, but by definition, it is the largest amount of air that can be expired after a maximal inspiratory effort. So you breathe very deep in, <gasps> and then you breathe out fully. The forced vital capacity is frequently measured clinically as an index of pulmonary function. It gives useful information about the strength of the respiratory muscles and other aspects of pulmonary function. Let us draw it in a graph of a normal lung. Here you have the volume on the X axis and flow through the lung on the Y. So a normal adult has a total lung capacity of 6 liters. So here is the volume um, set uh, here at 6 liters. So from 0 to 6 is a total lung capacity. The forced vital capacity, FVC, is again the largest amount of air that can be expired after you take a, the, the maximal breath in. The spirometry helps document and measure all this. So imagine taking a deep breath in and then exhaling it out as forcefully as and as quickly as you can. We can thus say this is your vital capacity or forced vital capacity, which in reality is your tidal volume plus your inspiratory reserve volume plus your expiratory reserve volume. Thus, the remaining air in our lungs after a maximal expiration, if you remember, is your residual volume. We can look at the forced vital capacity on a different graph by also introducing time. When we introduce time, we can calculate another component. 
Here we are looking at time on the x-axis in seconds, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then on the y-axis is the volume of air in the lungs, in liters, so 3 liters here and 6 liters. Remember, 6 liters is the total lung capacity in an adult male. Here is the volume of air expired by a normal adult man during a forced expiration after a deep inspiration, which again is your forced volume capacity. And here it's about 5 liters. And this again is your forced volume capacity. Thus, again, the air volume remaining in the lungs after maximal forced expiration is your residual volume. Now, this is an important concept. See if you can follow. The fraction of the vital capacity expired during the first second of a forced expiration is referred to as the forced expiratory volume, or FEV1. So from the graph, the forced expiratory volume in the first second FEV1 to the forced vital capacity FVC ratio can be calculated. 4 liters divided by 5 liters, which is 0.8 or 80%. And again, this is normal. We will look at how this changes with certain diseases. So let's look at what happens in COPD where we have gas trapping and we have obstruction of the airways. Many changes are seen in lung volume and lung capacities. In obstructive airway disease, straight away we can see an increase in total lung capacity. This is why it is common to see features of an enlarged chest in patients with COPD. The tidal volume remains the same. However, the inspiratory reserve volume decreases, the expiratory reserve volume increases, and the residual volume increases as well. Thus, if we were to calculate the lung capacities, the vital capacity, or also we can straight away say the forced vital capacity is the same or maybe decreased. The functional residual capacity is increased and the total lung capacity as mentioned altogether increases. The reason behind these changes in lung volume and capacities are two main things. Firstly, the reduction in airflow to the lungs due to obstruction. And then you have what's called air trapping. The air remains in the lungs at expiration. As a consequence, you get hyperinflation and consequently an increase in your functional residual capacity now let's see this using a spirometry and compare it to the normal on the left side. Again, here we have the graph with volume uh, in liters on the x-axis and flow of air through the lungs on the y-axis. The forced vital capacity, FVC, again, is the largest amount of air that can be expired after maximal inspiratory effort. Here in the dotted black line is normal forced vital capacity. Normal full inspiration and then normal full expiration. And this is obstructive lung disease. The whole graph shifts to the left because you have an increase in residual volume and an increase in total lung capacity, more than six liters. Your vital capacity or forced vital capacity, you can say, remains the same. But all up, your total lung capacity has increased because of the increase in your residual volume or better because of the increase in your functional residual capacity. You can see here the characteristic kink in, in the obstructive lung disease patient during forced expiration. This is because of the obstruction. And also the flow decreases slightly because of the obstruction through the airways. Let's see what the first second of a forced expiration uh, is using the graph looking at time and volume on the y-axis. Again, to compare this to normal uh, forced vital capacity, this is obstructive lung disease. We can see that the forced vital capacity is the same or slightly decreased. 
the forced expiratory volume in the first second has dropped significantly. Obstructive lung disease can be diagnosed when the ratio between FEV1 and FVC is less than 0.7 or 70%. And so in this example, FEV1 is about 1 liter and the FVC is about 5 liters. And so 1 divided by 5 is obviously less than 0.7 or less than 70%. And thus, this is an example of a person who has obstructive lung disease. Finally, let's look at restrictive lung disease. These conditions include pneumoconiosis, uh, sarcoidosis, uh, amongst many other things. In restrictive lung disease, you have restriction, like fibrosis in the lungs, which impair lung compliance. So the tidal volume remains the same, but you have all this restriction in the lung, all this fibrosis, and so your inspiratory reserve volume is reduced, and your expiratory reserve volume is reduced, and your and your residual volume is reduced as well. Everything is reduced. Thus, your force volume capacity is reduced. The functional residual capacity is reduced. And surprisingly, your total lung capacity is reduced. The reason for this, again, is because of pulmonary fibrosis or changes in the lungs that lead to restriction and lung compliance. You get stiffness, restriction. And because of this stiffness, you have reduction in lung volumes and lung capacities. Let's look at your uh, forced vital capacity using a graph again. The dotted black line represents normal forced vital capacity, which is the largest amount of air that can be expired after a maximal inspiratory effort. Here in brown is the pattern of forced vital capacity seen in restrictive lung disease. As you can see, it has shifted to the right. The reason for this shift and change is because firstly, your total lung capacity has reduced because of the restrictive lung changes. The residual volume has reduced, and so it is no surprise your vital capacity or forced vital capacity is reduced. What about the forced expiratory volume in the first second? Well, let's look at the other graph again at time on the x-axis. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 seconds. And lung volume on the y, which again in a normal adult male goes up to 6 liters. A normal person uh, shoots up and the force valve capacity goes up to about 5 liters. In restrictive here, however, in brown, you can see that the force valve capacity has reduced dramatically. But... The forced expiratory volume in one second is not as affected. The forced expiratory volume in one second, FEV1, in restrictive lung disease is not as affected as seen in patients who have COPD or obstructive lung disease. It can be normal actually in these patients who have restrictive lung disease or reduced, depending on the severity, and if the person has obstructive lung disease too. The FEV1 to FVC ratio is a useful tool in recognizing severity of airway disease and can help differentiate between COPD and restrictive lung disease. In restrictive lung disease, the FEV to FVC ratio is not as affected. So for example, in this uh, scenario of restrictive lung disease, the FEV1 is about 3 liters um, and the forced vital capacity is about 4 liters. So 3 divided by 4 is 0.75 or 75%. And thus, this can constitute restrictive uh, lung disease rather than obstructive airway disease. Hope this video makes sense and hope it was helpful.